Welkom aan toevallig wat bijgangers, want die zijn er ook, als het schijnt. Uh, welkom aan de mensen die het project Struikelstenen op de voet volgen. Zo zijn er ook bij aanwezig. Uh, welkom aan de speciale gasten die deze ceremonie voor Fischer Brosman luister bij zetten. Niet alleen door hun aanwezigheid, maar ook door enkele woorden die ze tot ons zullen richten. In the first place. A heartly welcome to the family of Fischl Grossman. We are delighted that 11 of you, grandson Akiva, granddaughter Mikhail, great-grandson Omri and great-granddaughter Shir, all with their respective partners, Edra, Eli, Kyle, Alex, and the children, Danny and Adam, not to forget Kyle's father, Claude, are present here. They made the long trip from Israel to attend to this solemn ceremony in remembrance of Fischl. Welcome Bruno de Wever, professor, historicus, professor aan de Universiteit Gent, schrijver van publicaties over de Belgische geschiedenis met specialisatie in collaboratie in de Tweede Wereldoorlog. Professor de Wever maakte deel uit van de academische commissie die het stadsbestuur van Antwerpen adviseerde in het herinneringsbeleid rond de Tweede Wereldoorlog. Ooit, in 2019, besloot hij een lezing ergens in Deurne over de Jurodenvervolging in Antwerpen, wat hij wel vaker doet, met de suggestie om in Deurne enkele struikelstenen te plaatsen. Ter herinnering 
aan de gruwelijke razzia's in plaats van de in augustus 1932. Dat bracht de bal aan het rollen. Bienvenue aussi à Marcel Tzal, président de l'association pour la mémoire de Shoah et Bella Sviatowski, responsable pour les pavés de la mémoire à l'association. Ce sont eux qui ont mené les recherches et recueilli les données sur ce qui est arrivé à Frisotros. En eigenlijk heb ik de laatste spreker van vandaag al eens verwelkomd. Want hij is een buurtbewoner. Niels Staats. Niels Staats. Oei, hier weer. Maar meer dan dat, hij is geweten raad van de handwerker voor de Partij Groen. Een initiatiefnemer voor het plaatsen van de eerste struikelstenen in de Eerdeplaats. Hartelijk welkom dus allemaal. Een warm welkom toe ook. Voor zij die niet vertrouwd zijn met het project struikelstenen, een zeer kort woordje van de toelichting. Voor deze who are not familiar with the project of the Remembered Stones, the, uh, the, 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 the Stolpersteinen, Le Pavé de Memoir, the Struikelstenen, the Remembered Stones, whatever you want to call them, uh, a brief explanation in Dutch. I believe the family official has received this information on paper, so I'll do it in Dutch. Struikelstenen is a social kunstmoeiment zo noemt de kunstenaar Winter Demnig. Sinds 1992 maakte hij deze messingsteentjes. Ze zijn gedenkstenen. Ze worden daartoe in stoek geplaatst voor het laatste vrijgekozen huis van de slachtoffers. Voor Fischl Brosman is dat hier. Lange Beelderstraat 205. Hiermee wenst Demnig slachtoffers van welke aard ook van het nationaal socialisme rond en tijdens de Tweede Oorlog visueel te herdenken. Ze zijn een aanklacht tegen extreme onverdraagzaamheid, kenmerkend voor de fascistische ideologie. Op elke missingsteen staat de naam van het slachtoffer, daaronder zijn zij nog haar geboortejaar plaats en datum van arrestatie door of namens het regime en als laatste de plaats en datum waar het slachtoffer werd vermoord of is overleden. More than 100.000 remembrance stones, Stolperstein, have since been placed around the world. They mark the international solidarity of all victims and are a reminder and a tribute of and a tribute to resistance to fascism. At placement of the 100,000 stone in Nuremberg, Winter Demnig himself described the significance briefly but powerfully. A hundred thousand times person remembered, Biogra biography researched, an inscription hammered in brass, a hole made in a sidewalk, a name brought back to the streets, a fate on which is called. A hundred thousand times a place created commemoration and mourning, to indict the crime, to bring people together, to connect the past with the present, to urge us to reflect and make us feel down. In Belgium, throughout the country, more than a thousand stones have already been placed. In Antwerp, 152 have been placed until today, as well for people of the resistance movement as for Jewish people. Today we are placing the 153rd stone in memory of official growth. Several dozen more stones will be placed in 2023. Many of those are in the hands of Willem Dennis, who also today will go on with the placing of the stone during the speeches. Willem is experienced. He placed many of the stones in hand. To start with one in front of his own house, in commemoration of his uncle Jan de Ridder. A policeman in Deurne who joined the White Brigade was taken into custody and murdered in the barracks of Nordhausen, Germany. Antwerp was very late. 
to grant me permission to place the stones. Yet, there are more than enough reasons to pay extra attention to the horrors of Nazism in Antwerp particular. Professor Bruno Beaver is better placed than me to tell you that, so I gladly give him the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, dear relatives of Fisher Crossman. My name is Bruno de Wever. I am a historian from the University of Ghent, specialized in the history of the Second World War. But today, I am primarily a, resi a, a resident of the city of Antwerp, where I have lived all my adult life. Antwerp has a troubled relationship with the history of the Shoah. No less than 15,000 Jews who lived in this city before the war were killed by the Nazis and their accomplices. Thank you. Yes. Today uh, we remember one of them, Fischer Grossman, your grandfather and great great grandfather, and if I have understood it correctly, great 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 grandfather. Soon his name will be interned on a large memorial of names that will be erected at the initiative of the city of Antwerp on the banks of the river Skeld, here a short distance, distance away. The monument will contain about 25,000 Antwerp's victims of World War II and Nazi violence. People who lived in the city stayed there or died there 25,000 of whom so 15,000 Jews who perished in the gas chambers of Auschwitz or other extermination camps perished in the gas chambers of Auschwitz or other extermination camps in German concentration camps by deprivation or execution perished while fleeing or fighting in resistance. The Jewish share of Antwerp's victims, war victims, is very large. 60% of Antwerp's war victims were Jewish. The monument will highlight this fact. That the monument will rise next year, 80 years after the liberation of the city, is nothing too soon. Historical research has revealed that Antwerp city government shared responsibility in the fact that so many of their city's Jews became victims of Nazi violence. Collaborators in the city council helped create an anti-Semitic climate and helped organize the hunt for Jews. Mayor Leo Delweide and police chief Josef de Potter, however not ideological collaborators, allowed the Antwerp police to be claimed by the occupying forces to round up Jews. More than 1,000 Antwerp Jews were rounded up by the city's police and handed over to their executioners. It places a debt of honor on the Antwerp city government. So the name monument is certainly not coming too soon. But there were also citizens in Antwerp who, at the risk of their own lives and safety, offered help to persecuted Jews. Several resistance organizations sought escape routes and hiding places. Individual citizens offered help. Fischer Grossmans, his wife and two daughters, were thus able to avoid the gruesome fate. For several years now, it is Antwerp citizens and relatives of victims who have adopted Gunther Denning's Stumbling Stones initiative. This bottom-up civic initiative is to me at least as important as official names memorials. Antwerp citizens and relatives of victims show by laying stumbling stones or remembering stones that the victims of Nazi terror have not been forgotten. Today, with the stumbling stone for Fischer Grossman, we are laying the 153rd stone in Antwerp. Only 
more than 14,800 to go to remember only the end of Jewish victims of Nazi terror. Thank you very much. Professor De Wever has outlined the general context in which to place the events surrounding Christian Grossman. Time now for the personal story. Who better to tell that story with all his emotions than the official family themselves? They will tell their story in Hebrew and English, enlivened and illustrated with audio clips, including from Fischl Grossman's daughter. Please stay forward. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all to come and honor my grandfather and my family. You are a very special people. I will speak in Hebrew, and after that, uh, Omri will say it in English. Saba Sheli, Zichor Ivracha, Fischer Grossman, Nolad Bishnat Elf Chamot Viteisha, Bechechoslovakia, Vigia de Belgia, Benashanim, Elf Chamot Isrom Sheva, and Elf Chamot Isrom Viteisha. באותן השנים הייתה דרישה מממשלת בלגיה להגיע למדינה ולעבוד בעבודת כפיים. סבא שלי הגיע מצ'כוסלובקיה, מעיירה בשם יאסינה, עם האחים שלו. הוא החל לעבוד במכרה פחם ולאחר מכן פתח עסק פרטי לתפירה ומכירת מעילי פרוות כאן, בבית הזה. הוא היה העסק שלהם, וכאן הוא גם גר עם אשתו יהודית ושתי הבנות שלו, עמליה וסימון. פישל ויהודית חיו בבית מעורב, הוא היה אתאיסט, ועוד אשתו, סבתא שלי, באה ממשפחה דתית מאוד. שנתיים אחרי פרוץ מלחמת העולם השנייה, בשנת 1942, הוא נלקח על ידי הגרמנים ליזמים גרמניים בצפון צרפת. לאחר מכן הוא גורש למחנה אושוויץ-בירקנאו, ומאותו הרגע... <laughs> לא נמצאה עדות להימצאותו. ברבות השנים עמליה וסימון התחתנו ולהם ילדים, נכדים ונינים שחלקם נמצאים כאן. במעמד מרכזי חשוב לנו להזכיר את אחינו הבכור יוסיפי של דימור זן שנקרא בשמו, יהי זכרו. פישר גרוסמן was born in 1909 in Czechoslovakia. And he came to Belgium during the 1927 to 29. <clears throat> there was a demand from the Belgian government to come to Belgium to do drudgery. So he came from Czechoslovakia, from a town called Yesenia, with his brothers. He worked in a coal work and later on worked in fur coats. After that, he opened a private business of sewing and selling furs uh, in a non-Jewish area, where there is, he also lived with his wife and two daughters, Amalia and Simon, here in this location of this house. Fischer was considered an atheist, while his wife came from a very religious home. Two years after the Second World War started, he was taken from the Germans to work for German initiators at the north of France. He then deported to Auschwitz-Birkenau, and from that period of time, his evidence of existence was never to be found. Over the years, Amalia and Simon got married, and they have children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. And in this uh, um, very uh, honorable um, ceremony, it is very important to us to remember 
and uh, remind um, their brother, um, my uncle, uh, Yossi Fischer de Nord, uh, that was named after him. Uh, God bless uh, his son. Now uh, we want to, uh, uh, you can hear now, my, our mother, his daughter, she couldn't come here, she's 91 years old, and she couldn't fly, and uh, we recorded her uh, saying what this uh, ceremony does to her. So just a minute, I will end. במיוחד אני מודה לעיריית אנטרפן על המאמץ הגדול שהם עשו בשביל לקיים את האירוע הזה. אני עמליה גרוסמן דינור, ביתו של פיליפ שהיה אבא היקר שלי. אני חייב לקודם להגיד שאבא שלי נלקח ב-14 לאוגוסט, 42, במקום הזה. אני מאז אבא בלב שלי ובאוב שלי, אני כל הזמן חושבת עליו, ואני חייבת להגיד שאני מודה לכם עוד פעם. על העירייה שהם מצאו לנכון ל... לעשות את הטקס הזה. לאבא ולי היו יחסים מאוד מיוחדים, אני מאוד מאוד אהבתי אותו, אני לא חייבת להגיד שהוא אהב אותי, זה מובן מאליו, אבל הוא היה איש עליז, חזק, גם ברחמן. בנוסף אני רוצה להגיד לכם שהטקס הזה שמתקיים ברגע הזה מאוד מאוד חשוב לי. אבא היקר שבשמיים, אולי אתה רואה שיש לך משפחה גדולה, יש לך פה ילדים, שזו אני, ויש לך נכדים, נינים ונינים גדולים. ולנינים בדור אחרי זה. זאת אומרת, אני הקמתי לך המשך מפואר ומכובד. כל הילדים הם, כל אחד בפני עצמו, איש שזוכר אותך ואוהב אותך דרך הסיפורים שלי. רציתי גם להוסיף שהטקס הזה הוא מאוד מאוד חשוב, מפני שזה ממוריאל לאבא שלי ולשישה מיליון יהודים שלקחו למחנות. וזה, אני מודה עוד פעם לעירייה שלקחה את זה בחשבון, וזה זכר לעולמים, האבן הזאת. היא משמעותית לכל מי שעובר ורואה את זה ואולי יבין מה קרה בשנים ההן. תודה רבה לכם ועוד פעם תודה לעירייה ולכל הנציגים שהגיעו. I will now translate into English what my mother just now said in Hebrew.
and the daughter of Philip, who was my dear father. I must say, I must say that my father was taken on the 14th of August 1942 from this base. From this day forth, my father is in my heart and mind, and I am always thinking about him. My father and me had a special relationship. I love him very much, and he loves me very much too. He was cheerful, strong, and very nice. Thank you for coming to this ceremony. In addition, this ceremony is in this very moment is very important to me. My dear father in the heavens, maybe you see from up there that you have big family. You have children, me, you have grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and even further generation from them. It means that, that I raise you a gracious and respectful continuation. Every one of them remembers you and loves you through my stories. I like to add that this sermon is very important because it is a memorial for my father and six million Jews that also been taken to, to camps. I thank again uh, all the people involved that you took this stone to your consideration. And it is remembers forever. It is significant for everyone that passes and see it and maybe understand what happens in those years. Thank you very much. Um, and again, thank you all uh, the representative that came. I would also like to thank the people we were in connected with who helped and created the Stumble Stone. And you, Claude and Yael, that helped us come to this moment. I would like to thank my late friend uh, Martin for helping us to start the process. de mémoire avait été placé illégalement à Anvers à l'initiative de l'Association pour la mémoire de la Shoah en guise d'acte de désobéissance civile. En 2020, à l'initiative de cette même association, Peter Demnich lui a lui-même placé une trentaine de pierres à Anvers. Sur le rôle de la MS aujourd'hui, Nous sommes heureux de laisser la parole à l'association même. Bonjour à tous. Nous célébrons ce jour dans l'espace urbain à Paris de mémoire au nom de Fischel Grossmann, face à son dernier domicile connu. Il fut l'une des nombreuses victimes du nazisme et assassiné à Auschwitz-Birkenau pour le seul crime d'avoir été ciblé par ses assassins comme personne de confession juive. À partir de ce jour, il sera utile de s'approprier de son histoire. Et pour ce faire, il faudra un lien, un ciment patrimonial et historique, voire une mémoire collective. Et c'est à ce titre que ce petit monument mémoriel urbain visera à interpeller les passants dans leur tête, mais aussi dans leur cœur, avec pour mission de, faire les yeux vers cette, de lever les yeux vers cette demeure d'où cette victime d'une idéologie mortifère fut raflée. C'est d'autant plus important que le fait de transmettre cette mémoire aux nouvelles générations mettront celle-ci en garde pour que ne se reproduise jamais plus 
c'est qu'avec constance, nous nommons l'indicible, la Shoah et le plus jamais ça. Ce pavé de mémoire questionnera tous les habitants du quartier, toutes confessions confondues. Il permettra d'ouvrir un dialogue sur le sujet. Autorisant de la sorte cette victime de se retrouver dans la communauté des hommes. Il s'intégrera dans l'histoire. Une histoire qui se doit de trouver place dans la conscience de l'opinion publique et très certainement dans le système éducatif. Il s'intégrera également dans la ville comme une preuve d'un sombre passé et fera la démonstration que l'idéologie nazie s'était imposée partout dans le pays. Pour lutter contre l'oubli, il nous implique le devoir d'être des passeurs de mémoire, car cette mémoire n'ira jamais de soi. Elle nécessitera toujours d'être portée encore davantage lorsque les derniers témoins auront tous disparu. Je vous remercie pour votre attention. Merci bien, Monsieur Tsang, président de l'organisation. Als laatste spreker hebben wij, zoals gemeld, Niels Tars. Persoonlijke titel als buurtbewoner. Hij woont daar, Tweede Straat links. Uh, en medewerker van het Struikelstedenproject in Antwerpen. Het is dan ook vanuit die optiek dat hij het belang van Struikelstede voor de buurt en voor de stad zal berichten. Het woord is aan Niels. Dank je. <laughs> I'm taller, but I'm also using my cell phone, so there's a, a, gen a generational gap. Uh, so I'm honored, absolutely honored and touched that I'm allowed to speak here. I live a little around the corner, just a couple streets down there, so I will be talking to you as, a, as someone living here, but also as someone whose family struggled with the loss of someone to the Nazi death camps. Um, so I'll start with the second part first. I mean, like many families, my family struggled as well. And I know how much this day means to me. And I saw it just earlier as well, and we saw how important this day is. Um, searching for some sort of closure is a difficult process. And for me, a process should always end with a product. It should end in some, something. For some people, it's a song. Some people write poems. Academics, they do lectures or they write papers. But for the families of victims of Nazism, there wasn't really a way to get closure, to, to put an end point to the process. And I think, and that's why I'm very grateful that Gunter Demnig started this initiative, because it means so much to so many people. Um, laying a struggle state, as it's called in Dutch, is thus an end to a long process and it can be very different for all families, for all individuals. It's the end of a long silence, or it's the end of a lot of talking, a lot of commemorating. So I think for every family, this means a lot. And if we walk around the town and we see these stones, for me, it's a part of the clan legacies, small history, small tales of people living through the war. And that's why it's so important, so important to have these stones and small commemorations throughout the city. And it's a little bit of a, a milestone as well for this neighborhood. It's one of the first struggles that we have in our neighborhood. And it shows that the war not only touched certain areas of the city, but all the areas of the city were involved. Every, every neighborhood has its story to tell. And that's why I think this is not the end of a process, but it's also the beginning. And that's why I talk to you as a person living in the neighborhood, and I want to make a promise to you as well. Uh, we all heard the story official call to everyone here, if you pass by with family, with friends, tell the story, take a moment to remember, so the story isn't lost, and that it becomes part of the tradition, of the, of the history of this neighborhood, and that's my promise, as someone living here in the neighborhood to you, that we will continue this story and keep the memory alive. of Günther Demnig and after what we heard today, the more than 100,000 Stolpersteinen should remind us that behind every story, uh, behind every stone, there is a human life.
that there are some 100,000 stones, but it should be 12 million. That we must stand up for human rights today, even if there is opposition. Op verzoek van de familie sluiten we deze ceremonie af met het lied Abino Malkayo, Onze Vader op de Koning, gezongen door Barbara Streisand. Na het einde van het lied staat dit iedereen vrij persoonlijke foto's te maken en informeren. Thank you very much.